Okay, welcome back to this series on Graylog, and in this video we're going to be looking at Graylog pipelines. So far in this series we've looked at inputs, streams, and index sets, and they all serve important roles, but the reality is pipelines is where you'll be spending a majority of your time in Graylog, at least initially. That's because pipelines allow us to do anything we want to a message in Graylog. We can add, delete, change key value pairs to a message in Graylog. We can do data lookup to external data sources. We can even use them in decorators to change the message in real time while searching. Pretty much any requirement you have to edit and normalize the message to get it the way you want it will be handled with pipelines. If you watched my video on extractors, I said they were going away and don't use them anymore to use pipelines instead. So in this video, we're going to build a pipeline rule that does the job of extractors, extracting key value pairs from a string of text. I'm going to use this login authentication message from my firewall as an example. I want to extract the username and source IP from the message field and insert them into their own key value pairs in the message. And I want to clarify, message has two different meanings depending on the context. A message in gray log is the entire thing. All the key value pairs contained here is a message. A message field is just another key value pair contained in the message that just happens to be called message. So we have two main concepts in pipelines. We have pipelines and pipeline rules. Pipelines are simply the flow of messages from the input that is connected to a stream to the output that is connected to the stream's index set. Pipeline rules are then attached to the pipeline to do something to the message. So I need to create a pipeline and pipeline rule that will take this authentication message and extract the key value pairs out of it. So let's first create our pipeline. We can navigate to system and pipelines. Click the add new pipeline button. We can enter a title and description and click create pipeline. So we have a warning here that's basically saying no streams are connected to this pipeline, so no messages are going to enter this pipeline. We need to click the edit connections button to route messages into this pipeline. We are going to select one or more streams from the drop down list, and all the messages contained in the streams I select here will be routed into this pipeline. This authentication message is a pfSense message, and I have a stream set up for all my pfSense messages, so I'm going to select pfSense here. Click the update connections button, so now we have messages flowing through the pipeline, but nothing is happening to them. We need to add some pipeline rules to do something to the messages flowing through the pipeline. To add and manage pipeline rules, we can click the manage rules link. Click the create rule button to add a new pipeline rule. So pipeline rules are currently in a state of transition. As of Graylog 5.2, they added this new rule builder to create pipeline rules. Prior to 5.2, they had a text box where you had to write a little bit of pseudocode. It was prone to syntax errors and other common programming mistakes, so they created this rule builder to get around all that. Now, the major downside to the rule builder currently is that you can't copy and paste rules easily, so hopefully they address this in the future. But we're going to use the rule builder because it's less prone to error and you can always convert it back to the pseudocode later if you want to. So let's enter a title, and this is how we're going to select the rule later when we go to add it to our pipeline. So come up with a good naming scheme because all your pipeline rules will be thrown into a list here. Our first option here is the win clause. This is a condition that must evaluate to true for this pipeline rule to be applied to the message. If this condition is false, then the message will just simply skip over this rule. Now we have a list of conditions we can select here, and we can also link multiple conditions together with the and or options to get more specific if we need to. So the first thing you should know is that you can just leave this blank and not configure anything, and this will just insert a true statement. And this will cause every single message that hits this pipeline rule to be applied. This could be a good or bad thing depending on what you're trying to do, but you should be aware that it is possible for all messages in a pipeline to match a rule. Now for an extractor type pipeline rule, you really should have a win clause. We don't really want this extractor pipeline rule running on all my messages. I only want it to run on my authentication message. So for an extractor type pipeline rule, I simply want to check if the message contains at least part of the string I'm trying to extract. So to do this, we can select the field contains condition. This is a condition that checks if some field contains some text. When the message field contains successful login for user, when that is true, then we're going to start executing whatever actions we have below here. To do the job of extractors, we really just need one action. The extract grok to fields action. This action will use grok patterns to extract values from a field in the message. 
Now, Grok patterns are simply placeholders for regular expressions. They link a complicated regular expression like this to a simple Grok pattern like this. We can see all the Grok patterns defined in our system by going to System and Grok Patterns. Here is a list of all the Grok patterns that are available to use and the regular expressions associated with them. Now, I highly recommend that if you're new to building these Grok patterns, you start in a Grok debugger tool like this. I'll link this one in the description. This really makes it easier to see the patterns and what you're matching. I will mention that they do have a simulator in the Greylog web GUI right now, but this is kind of broken, especially with special characters. So hopefully they fix this because it's basically trying to do the same thing as this Grok debugger. So in the Grok debugger, what I'll do is I'll just copy and paste the entire message I'm working on into the lower text box here. And this upper text box is the Grok pattern I'm going to build. This pattern is really just the same string. We just need to insert Grok patterns at the locations we want to extract. Now we can start matching anywhere in the string. So if your string has a bunch of junk in the beginning, like timestamps and sequence numbers, in this case, I have a forward slash index. I'm just going to omit that and then just start matching as successful login for user. Now I want to capture the username here. In order to do that, I'm going to insert a grok pattern. To do that, I need to type in a percent sign followed by a curly bracket. The grok pattern I want to use, in this case, I'm going to use the username grok pattern colon, then I'm going to type the key I want to assign this value to. So I'm going to assign this to the username key. And then we can close this with another curly bracket. You can see as soon as I did that, we matched on this grok pattern and now we are extracting the username from this string. So let's continue this string and extract the client IP address too. Okay, this looks good. We are extracting the username and client IP. So a hackish way of using grok patterns is the greedy data grok pattern. This is just a regular expression of dot star. And in plain English, that is any character zero or more times. So basically match anything. Now I could use this greedy data pattern instead of IPv4, but you can see the extraction gets all messed up because this is the last thing in the string. So I'm grabbing the rest of the string. So we need to terminate this by adding more of the string into this pattern here. I'm going to do a space round bracket. Unfortunately, a round bracket is part of a regular expression syntax. So we need to escape that with a backslash for it to be considered part of the string. Okay, so now we have this working, but another issue with greedy data is now we're grabbing anything in this position. So it's possible for non-IP addresses to be inserted into this client IP field in Greylog. This can break things such as dashboards and other stuff that is expecting an IP address to be in this field. So it's best practice to avoid using greedy data where possible and use specific grok patterns. So we're going to change this back to IPv4 and we have something that might work here. So let's go ahead and set up our extract grok to fields action. First, we will tell this action to look at the message field since that is the field that contains the authentication message. We will copy and paste our grok pattern we built into the grok pattern field. This grok named only is for grok patterns that are built using other grok patterns. If we look at our grok patterns, we can see that some of the grok patterns are built using other grok patterns. This option is basically saying only extract the main grok pattern and not all these sub grok patterns. There's also a prefix and suffix here to the field name if needed. Okay, click update to add this action. Okay, so we're all done with this pipeline rule, but now we need to assign it to the pipeline. So let's edit the pipeline I created. We click the edit button on stage zero to add a pipeline rule. We will select the pipeline rule we just created, then select update stage. Okay, now this rule is active and messages are being processed against it. We can log into our firewall now and verify that this rule is working correctly. Okay, and if we find this authentication message, we can see that it does have additional key value pairs in it. So we now have successfully replaced extractors with pipelines. Okay, so the last thing you should be aware of are pipeline stages. Stages only matter when you go to add your second pipeline rule to the pipeline. Now, let's say I wanted to take the IP address of this client IP field and do a data lookup on it. Maybe I had another data source that could give me more information on this IP address, and then I could insert that additional information into the message. So you would build another pipeline rule that does this data lookup, but you would place this rule in a stage above the first stage that has this extracting rule. You can just think of stages as building on the message from the previous stages. In my first stage, I extracted the client IP. In my second stage, I'm going to do a lookup on the client IP to some data source. And then maybe in my third stage, I route it to an authentication stream for long-term storage. 
Stages allow us to run rules sequentially, one after the other. Okay, so I think that just about does it for this video on pipelines. I think that's enough to get started and covers all the basic concepts. In my next video, we're going to get into more advanced pipeline rules with data lookups and doing some very cool stuff with the Librium MS API. As always, thank you again for watching. 